So hi everyone, it's my pleasure to be here to present our work, The Office 3D. Are you 3D? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Office 3D, I need a 3D feature reconstruction through a static with single year bell sensors. Uh, my name is Yu, a third year PhD student at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This is a joint work with my colleague Wimo, Zhuo Hao, Xin, and my uh, advisor Dr. Jian Liu from UTK and Dr. VP Wen from UTA. Wimo is supervised by Dr. Wen through the course of this project. Uh, facial landmark tracking and the 3D reconstruction has become fundamental in various emerging applications that require facial analysis. For instance, uh, they can increase the, the awareness of the user's real time facial uh, experience in immersive in visual scenarios. And also, they can enable silent speech interface for community and human computer interactions. And also, facial and the most dynamics can help to increase the quality of speech during pandemics uh, where people all wear face masks. Uh, moreover, they can also be used for attentiveness and uh, attention monitoring, such as driver attentive monitoring and the health monitoring for early diagnosis of various diseases. Traditional vision based approaches uh, requires a camera positioned in front of the user's face and the uh, constrained recording conditions, such as the line of sight and under good lighting conditions, uh, which makes them not applicable in many user scenarios where the user's head are likely to engage in 3D head movements. And also, the mobility and the proximity of the camera to users also raise privacy concerns. Alternatively, there are many variable based uh, approaches that uh, recognize the user's facial gestures. Uh, however, there are limitations that is that uh, most of them are classification based on methods and that they can only identify a, a small set of gestures. And also, the sensor placement are quite obtrusive in most of these studies. Uh, different uh, of these uh, works, uh, we provide a variable bell sensing system, Belfast 3D, that can continuously and obtrusively and then reliably sense the entire facial movements, track 2D facial landmarks, and uh, further render the 3D facial animations. Required on a pre trained deep learning model, our bell sensing system can borrow the knowledge from the vision domain to push the limits of bell sensing and then uh, increase its capability of tracking the entire facial movements that require some sensors attached on the user's face. To start with, we first conduct a, a, a comprehensive anatomical analysis of the facial muscles. We observe that different facial muscles uh, or experience are produced out by the contraction of a different set of facial muscles. Whenever a set of facial muscle contracts, a burst of electric impulses were generated, and uh, this electricity can be captured by bio sensors using electromicrographic uh, measurements. And we observe that the bell signal is unique for each different uh, expressions, which creates the possibility of sensing the entire facial movements using biosensors. Uh, to realize such a system, we face several challenges. First, we need to ensure our system is non intrusive, uh, which means our, we cannot put our sensors on near sensitive areas, such as the user's mouth or eyes. Therefore, uh, our sensors can only uh, sense uh, uh, very tiny and uh, passive motor activities. And also, uh, tracking the landmarks uh, uh, via bell signals is an export area. There are, uh, bell signals can only provide uh, one-dimensional and uh, cross-grained uh, bell electrical signals, and that there's no direct mapping between the bell signals and the official landmarks. Finally, to ensure our system is smooth and in real time, we need to uh, ensure our reconstructed facial animation should be continuous and smooth, uh, which means the transitions between different uh, frames should uh, uh, follow the physical rules and uh, increase the smoothness of the 3D animations. And also, uh, the animation should be generated in a timely fashion for real-time applications. Uh, we still uh, identify the six uh, possible sensor locations based on our anatomical analysis. Uh, we first performed the eye signal to noise visual analysis to measure the quality of bell signals at uh, different locations. We observed that uh, P4 to P6 has relatively signal to noise ratios, which means the signals are more obvious uh, in these areas. Uh, however, uh, due to the intrusiveness of P1, which is uh, very close to the eyes, 
Reason for forming the PCA analysis to quantify the distinguishability of the bio signals uh, for different uh, facial expressions. Uh, due to the P1 is uh, uh, too close to the eyes, uh, we choose P2 and P3 in terms of the opportunities and uh, the capability of sensing. We then designed uh, uh, cost, we then customized a, a single earpiece based on the locations of the sensors. The, three, uh, the single earpiece of wearable device is, is 3D printed. Uh, we then design a cross model deep learning model that can learn the, real, uh, the vision biosignal correspondence in a supervised manner, which pushes the limits of biosensing to enable rich sensing capabilities that are currently invisible. Uh, specifically, our system contains two networks, a vision based network uh, uh, to uh, extract the facial landmarks from, uh, from a high grade vision domain, and a biosignal network that uh, uh, aims to reconstruct the, bio, the landmarks. Uh, uh, purely from the bell signals. During the testing phase, uh, we only uh, use the bell signal to get the uh, uh, landmarks from the signals recorded uh, by our uh, wearable devices. And then we use some automated uh, algorithms to generate the 3D avatar. We first uh, pre-process the vision data and the bell signal data in separate ways. First, uh, we guarantee the synchronization between the two modality data streams. And then we, we resample the video frames to a uniform frame rate. And then we detect the faces in the videos using a pre trained hierarchical classifier. For the bio signal side, we use two bandpass filters to extract uh, both EMG and the EOD signals. And then we perform a signal segmentation to map the bio signals to each uh, video frames. We didn't get the facial landmarks from the high-grade vision-based networks. So we, we adopt a, a high-resolution network, HRNet, for a better performance. So different from uh, other uh, traditional vision networks, we should either rely on uh, low-resolution of high-level features for classification. Uh, our adopted network maintains a high-resolution for the whole process, uh, which ensures the high-resolution information is preserved uh, in the whole process. And we only pre uh, for simplicity and uh, reduce the complicational, reduce the computational complexity. We only preserve 53 major facial landmarks that cover major facial components such as eyes, eyebrows, nose, and the mouth. Uh, we then eliminated the effect of the different head poses and the camera uh, angles using the landmark alignment. Uh, after alignment, we ensure all the landmarks are in the same scale, in the same angle, and in the same rotation and translation. Uh, we then train a 1D CNN based uh, biosignal network uh, for facial landmark reconstruction. We take the aligned 2D facial landmarks from the vision network as ground truth, and then train a 1D CNN based network to regress the facial landmarks directly from the four channels of biosignal time series. Uh, so when these things are most suitable for this uh, kind of tasks due to their uh, low computational cost and uh, their performance on uh, handling with uh, 1D dimensional time series signals. We choose to use the win loss function as our loss function to increase the network training capability for the small scale error landmarks. Uh, L1, L2 landmarks uh, are all, uh, can also be used uh, but uh, as they treat uh, each landmark uh, individually. So it's important, but uh, less active landmarks may not achieve good attention during training uh, as uh, each landmark uh, shares the same weights. So differently, uh, our use of landmarks uh, will have more weights on the small range of errors, which makes them kind of, uh, uh, gain more attention when training a reverse network, uh, which can help to increase the total performance of the network. So that the different uh, so the specific structures and the hyperparameters can be found in our paper. After training, so in, in the testing phase, uh, we only rely on the bell signal to uh, do the reconstruction. Uh, specifically, the pre-trained model will take bell signal frames as input to reconstruct 2D facial landmarks. And then we use a, a common filter to stabilize the landmarks to ensure the smoothness of the reconstructed animation. And then we use a 3D head model to generate the 3D facial avatar from the 2D landmarks uh, through an uh, optimization process. To evaluate our system, we recruit 16 participants 
include 11 males and five females, aging from 21 to 34. Uh, so we asked uh, each participant to rapidly perform the seven universal expressions. To assist with them, seven pictures are displayed on the screen, portraying the corresponding face for them to initiate. And we use various cameras for, record, for data recording. Uh, the set of the training data set is set for 20 minutes, and we use 10 minutes data for testing. And uh, after the training uh, phase, we ask each participant to fill in a questionnaire on their experience and uh, their thoughts on our system. So in general, our system can achieve an average of 1.85 millimeter levels and 3.38% uh, normalized mean error across all 16 users. 80% uh, of the reconstructed landmarks have a low um, mean absolute error of lower than 2.66 millimeters, which means our system can achieve, uh, can reliably track the entire facial movements and uh, reconstruct the 2D facial landmarks in a millimeter level error. We noticed that uh, distinct, uh, distinct landmarks may have different scales of errors due to their movement variability, uh, such as the mouth uh, will have a larger error compared with eyes and uh, eye rims. So we uh, separately evaluated the uh, errors uh, for each for different mouse regions. Uh, but we, uh, we found that even if mouse have a relatively large error, uh, we can, for 80% of them, uh, they can still have a low mean absolute error of lower than 3.87 millimeters. Uh, as normalized mean error is a commonly used metric for vision-based approaches, we also compare our approach with the vision directly with the vision-based approaches. Uh, we notice this may not be a fair comparison as our system uh, use a vision-based networks to get the ground truth and we use our self-collected data set. So our goal is to demonstrate that our system can reach a com comparable error uh, when compared with the vision-based approaches. And also, uh, we test our, the performance of our system under the appearance of uh, different two types of VR uh, headsets and the face marks. So when you wear the different uh, facial occlusions, uh, your, your muscles may be constrained and also influence the uh, bell signal readings. So in order to get the ground truth, we cut off the front side of the mask and then tear off the headset to, to obtain the landmarks for the mouth and the eyes. And we observe that uh, there will not be a such influence when the user is wearing a face mask or a wear headset. We still achieve a low error around two millimeters. We also notice that uh, the, the bell signal will be influenced by the day by day changes on the user's face and the skins. And when the user uh, like wear the, head, the devices, uh, the placement of the centers may not be the same uh, as for the training data set. So we separate our training and testing data uh, by one day to two weeks to evaluate the temporal stability of our system. So in the worst case, when the training and testing data are separated by two weeks, we can achieve an uh, average mean absolute error of 2.87 millimeters. And then we didn't observe a, a huge impact uh, during a two week period. And also, uh, we asked the users to fill in a questionnaire after their usage of our system. And we found, some, and, and we found that most of them are, are willing to use our system and the field is comfortable to wear and the field is easy to use. And also, our participants can use it for more than 30 minutes, which is enough for many usage scenarios. In conclusion, we have proposed Bellface 3D. The first uh, single year piece uh, let with a bell system system that for continuous 2D facial network tracking and the 3D facial animation rendering. We maintain a minimum optimum level through anatomical analysis of facial muscles. Finally, we push the limits of bell sensing to make it uh, possess the capability of other hybrid uh, modalities such as vision. And our experiments on 16 participants and their world scenarios demonstrate that our system can accurately track the errors uh, in a continuous manner within millimeter errors. Uh, thanks for the listening.